Hi everyone again. So in this lesson, we are going to look at Oracle Access Manager console. In previous video lesson, we looked at WebLogic console. So we are going to connect to the server. And in my case, it's 192.168.1.205. 7001 is my admin server port. And OAM console is the console or application URI or the context URI of application um, where my OAM console is running deployed on the admin server. Hit enter. And when you log into OAM console, by default you log in using a user called WebLogic that is part of embedded LDAP. The user who can log into this console is a user from system store. We are going to look at that in when we integrate Oracle Access Manager with LDAP server as identity and system store. So there are two types of store in Oracle Access Manager. And just to quickly give you that background, but we have a dedicated lesson for that. We have user identity store. And when you click on user identity store under configuration in Oracle Access Manager console, by default, there is a user store called embedded LDAP server, which is user identity store. So if you notice here, there are two uh, stores here, default store and system store. And we are going to look at what these stores are. But for now, by default, these both are pointing to the user identity store, which is pointing to the embedded LDAP server. So in order for you to log into the Oracle Access Manager console, you need to be a user into a store or user store that is designated as system store. In our case, system store is user identity store and that user identity store is pointing to the embedded LDAP server. We'll look at this in detail when we come to the module where we integrate Oracle Access Manager with OID. So let's go back to the launch pad. Now, this is an Oracle Access Manager console now this console might look slightly different depending on which version of Oracle Access Manager you are on. And there is a sub there is a significant change in each path set of Oracle Access Manager. But functionality point of view, more or less these are same. It's just the organization of these functions are different on different path set of Oracle Access Manager. So if you see a different thing, don't worry about it. Now. From this panel, we are not going to focus on identity federation or security token service or mobile and social or access portal. These are not part of this course. We are going to cover identity federation, but I have a separate course that I'm currently working on, which is federation or identity federation. Once we launch this course, then I will let you know. But for now, we are only focusing on Oracle Access Manager. So you'll be focusing on this section or this panel, which is Access Manager, and you're going to focus on one under Configuration. So let's start with Configuration section, and this is where this is a panel that we'll use to configure Oracle Access Manager. So under Available Services, by default, under Oracle Access Management Suite, you have only Access Manager service enabled. If you want identity federation or security token or mobile and social or access portal service, you click on each of these individual buttons here to enable the service. Then you have user identity store that I explained briefly just a, a short while ago. We are going to have a dedicated session uh, or dedicated module on the user identity store and that's when I'm going to cover that. Then you have administration. and Administration are basically, you are, as I said, the administrators for Oracle Access Manager console. So here you can search who all are the uh, administ. You can delegate the administrators. Uh, so right now my system store is de designated. System store is user identity store, and that user identity store is pointing to the embedded LDAP server, as we saw it under user identity store here. So my system store is user identity store and user identity store is pointing to the embedded LDAP server. So now who all can administer this Oracle Access Manager? It will be 
you can control it via here and you, by default right now anybody who is in administrators group inside my user identity store can administer we are going to do or look at that a little bit later again how we designate when we integrate oracle access manager with oid that's when we'll come here and add few more administrators go back to launchpad again and then next is certification validation that's something to do with or uh, crs or we have not used it uh, anytime so maybe you'll not need it for at least another couple of years server instances are your oracle access manager servers so how many managed servers are there it's designated here so right now by default i have oam underscore server one and if i add more if i create more managed servers and i want to bring off type oam and i want to bring them into my access management for high availability i can come here and add it here or when we do ha section i'm going to run or create a domain again so there'll be a dedicated module for that and that's where i'm going to look at oam underscore server we'll we'll see two servers so you can create a manage uh, oam server from here as well go back to launchpad again and then this tab is for common settings so if you need to set common setting and let's log into and see what the common settings are so click on common settings and this is important you should know this so first of all session lifetime in minutes is 480 minutes which means eight hours so what does it mean is that when a user logs in and they continue to work for eight hours as soon as eight hours are over even though they are working they'll be logged out and they have to re-log in so a session is valid maximum for eight hours idle timeout stands for if a user is working on the system and they don't do any activity for 15 minutes then they will have to re-log into the system so that means if you don't do any activity on system then how long the session should be valid if you come back stay idle for 14 minutes and then come back you can in, you you can continue working 16 minute you won't be able to uh, you need to log in again you can change that typically on for companies most of the companies they do 30 minute idle timeout now management maximum searches so if you're doing any search in order to improve performance you do a maximum search result of 100 now maximum number of sessions per user this is when a user logs on from one machine and then same user try to log into the second machine they will be allowed or third machine or fourth machine or within the same machine but under different browser so this is where you will see number of maximum they are allowed up to eight some companies don't allow multiple session for the same user they say only two are allowed or one is allowed and that's when you change here then next is database persistent of active session enabled which means when user session or information is also stored in the database again we are going to look at that in subsequent section or later modules now this is my coherence i when i was like discussing about web logic part i mentioned when we during the installation that oracle access manager uses coherence and by default coherence server listen on 9095 port number so if you if i go to the server and do a net stat minus an and graph for 9095 if you see it's listening and my server is listening on 9095 that's my coherence default port time to live number of hopes this is related to the subnet or all the managed servers within the sub within the they should be in the same subnet so this is what it is about then you have a multicast address so there are two ways of clustering one is unicast and multicast now coherence listen on multicast uh, whereas when we create again this is covered in high availability where we cover the unicast and multicast clustering mechanism uh, so I said earlier here coherence uses multicast whereas for web logic or for oracle access manager managed server 
clustering we are going to use unicast but we'll look at that when we come to the high availability section then this is for audit configuration and again we are going to add a dedicated bonus for audit configuration where we're going to show you how to configure audit both from the file based repository and then from their file based repository repository to the audit loader and use database these are the filter preset which designate or which determines how much audit to be done depending on whether it's a low medium all or none so when you select medium how much editing happens again we are going to cover that in an auditing section uh, in our oracle in one of the subsequent modules so uh, it's here it's showing that default system and identity store both are pointing to the user identity store which is embedded ldap server again we are going to look and like look at that in a separate module so this is common settings under the launch pad then we have oracle access manager setting we are not going to look at mobile social or federation or security token or access portal, portal setting you'll be looking at either common setting or access manager setting so click on access manager setting now here you are telling it that oracle access manager server is iem.k21technologies.com this is because when i installed my oracle access manager server the etc host file had in first entry at iem.k21technologies.com now the oracle access manager managed server is listening on port number 14000 uh, 100 my oracle access manager protocol is http and server error mode is external i'm not sure what this server error mode is but then i'll investigate further and maybe we can i'll then explain later on what the server mode is but for you here load balancer is this now important thing is if you put a load balancer in front of that and that load balancer is terminating the ssl on the load balancer and let's suppose that's listening on SSL port number HTTPS and port number 443. So what you'll do is you'll come here and change the OAM server host to the load balancer name. The OAM server port will change to the load balancer server port number. The Oracle Access Manager protocol will change to the load balancer protocol, which could be HTTPS. Now, um, SSO token version will park it, you will not change this. Access protocol is now we'll have in WebGate section, we'll cover that WebGate to Oracle Access Manager talks in one of the three modes open, simple, and cert. So when you run your WebGate or Oracle Access Manager in the simple mode or cert mode, you need some additional configuration, and that's where simple and cert mode is by default oracle access manager listen on open mode and so you you don't need any of these things you have the policy now the policies are stored in database but as soon as you extract or you query any uh, any resource or when webgit connects a, the oracle access manager will fetch the policy details from the database and will keep it in the memory that caching for the policy size is this and time to live is basically that are going to be stayed the policy cached should stay in the server oam server for 60 minutes so this is your common access manager setting so this is these are the settings related to the oracle access manager configuration in the next mod next video or in the next lesson i'm going to look at some of these settings on oracle access manager but we have a dedicated module where we have an application or policy model. That's when we are going to look at in detail. So add on to the next video where I'm going to explain some of this access manager overview um, or Oracle, Oracle access manager um, configuration in the next lesson. So add on to the next lesson.